Give me justice, O God, and plead my cause against a nation that is faithless. From the deceitful and cunning, rescue me. For you, O God, are my strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is being offered for special intentions. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will I have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from the leadest to the greatest shall know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sins no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm responds, create a clean heart in me, O God. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin cleanse me. Create a clean heart in me, O God. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall return to you. Create a clean heart in me, O God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source, source of eternal salvation for all who obey. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of eternal glory. Whoever serves me must follow me, says the Lord. And where I am, there also will my servant be. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord, Lord. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip 
who was, uh, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. And Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. Whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating what kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good day, everyone. And I pray everybody had a wonderful week. And as you can see in the tone in our gospel, it's taking a, it's starting to make a, uh, take a more ominous uh, turn in what we hear. We hear Jesus actually troubled. You know, we're coming close to the crucifixion. It's going to be happening soon. And so, as anybody, you know, he is human. It's going to start there. He's going to have fear. And we know he has fear. And so this is starting to trouble him. Uh, but we have an interesting exchange that occurs, and that's what I would really like to focus on is the really the beginning of our gospel, because we see really uh, a summary of our Lenten journey. It really is. A lot of these gospels are. I know I kind of keep on saying that, but they are a summary of the journey that we take during Lent. And so how do we begin? Some Greeks had come to worship at the Passover festival. Okay, and so we have these Greeks, and these could be either Greek Jews or Greeks themselves who are converting to Judaism or converted to Judaism, and they're coming. But it's an interesting thing that we see that given to us, that detail, that these Greeks had come to worship at the Passover uh, feast. And so they come to Philip, who is, that's a Greek name. And so they come to somebody in a sense that they're coming to Christ through something that they recognize or someone they recognize. So, so Philip obviously is able to be conversant in Greek. And so they ask to see Christ. They ask to see Jesus. And it's interesting, again, this is where that detail of the Greeks comes in. Because we all approach Christ from our own way. And then Christ clears up who he is. And so they're listening to Philip. They, they then follow with Andrew. They hear what those apostles are saying. But the Greeks also have their own idea of Jesus. Okay, just because of their own background and, and their own culture. That's, this is how they're going to approach it. And they're looking to meet uh, not a savior, but a great teacher. Okay, as we know, as we know, simple Greek history tells us Plato, Socrates, Aristotle, you had all the schools of philosophy there, Stoics, you know, uh, Peripatetics, you had all these different philosophies, all these uh, different academies that the Greeks had run, and they revered uh, prominent teachers. So they're looking for a teacher, not necessarily a savior. Okay, so they're approaching Christ. Uh, in a manner that they have an understanding of. And Philip and Andrew bring Christ to him. And what's the first thing that Jesus said? The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. And so while they're approaching him looking for teacher, he's responding to them as Savior. Okay, and again, this is why I say it really is a journey of our Lent as well. 
You know, again, we approach Christ uh, through our own experiences, our own cultures, our own ideas, but we have to be open to what Christ is telling us. And Christ is clarifying who he is. And he will always do that. He will clarify uh, the faith and bring people and invite people, better said by that way, invite people to enter deeply into that relationship with him. But you have to accept who he is. You might approach him as teacher, but you'll have to come to know him as savior. And I always said that in all my classes, when I taught as a layman and when I taught as a priest in the high schools and everything, I would always tell my classes, you know, if you are looking for Christ, if you're looking for the truth, capital T, truth, capital T, you will find it. You will find it. Just stay close to Christ. Pursue looking for the truth, capital T, and you will find it. But I always told them, you have to ask yourself what you're looking for. Are you looking for the truth, which was going to lead you to Christ? Or are you looking for the truth, lowercase t, where this is my truth? You know, so many times we hear people say that today. Oh, this is my truth. This is my reality. This is my truth. That's not necessarily Christ's truth. And sometimes people say, oh, I found God when I found myself or I found my truth. It's a very, I will say this, it's a very dangerous statement because a lot of times the God that they find that validates them and everything is the God that looks back at them from their own mirrors. You know, it's not that they found Christ, it's, it's that they found some validation of themselves. You know, and we have to know ourselves. You know, the philosophers tell us to that, you know, and that's an important thing. But if we're pursuing Christ, he's not always going to validate. He's going to challenge because he wants us to enter that mystery and enter that relationship in a deeper sense. And so, again, my friends, this is a Lenten journey. We approach him with our own ideas, with our own ways of thinking and all of that, with our own baggage, if you will. But when we meet Christ, we have to give up all that and understand who he is and who he is telling us that he is. It's more than teacher, it's savior. God bless you. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Entrusting ourselves to the life-giving power of God, we voice our prayers to the Father. For those preparing to be received into the church this Easter, that they always keep close to the Lord in prayer, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in civil governance will dedicate themselves to justice, peace, authentic freedom, and the generous defense of the poor, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That our local community may benefit from the fruits of the National Eucharistic Revival by spending more time adoring our Eucharistic Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, comfort those who mourn, 
loosen fetters, and grant safety to travelers, help to the sick, and salvation to the dying, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of all the faithful departed, may the hour of their entrance into eternal life quickly come, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to die to ourselves, to more fully serve Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray also for the men and women in our military and our first responders. May they come home safely and soon, and may those who have seen violence find peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most merciful Father, forgive our evil doing and remember our sin no more. Prepare our hearts for the passion, death, and resurrection of your Son. We ask this as we ask all things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. 
We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Your kingdom, kingdom come, your will, will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. bread. And, and forgive, forgive us, us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only, only say, say the, the word, word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe in the time of death. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. The gospel of the body of Christ. The blood of Christ. At this time, we offer our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. And have a blessed and wonderful week, everyone. And the following week will be Palm Sunday, so we'll be uh, doing the Mass from our church like we normally do. But then uh, Holy Week, uh, we will, you know, I'll have a better idea of it next week uh, but i know like we're not going to be live streaming the easter vigil but we are going to live stream a mass during easter and uh you're more than welcome to uh, watch that and i gotta find out um it's sometimes hard to live stream the holy week masses and liturgies because of all the movement that goes on you would need a professional cameraman behind the camera and as you can see it's just sister and i uh but again have a beautiful wonderful week and have used this uh week to prepare for the most holy week coming god bless you all